So wait a omnes. Hello everybody. I'm Bryson J. Garland. This is Our Lady of Graces. Let me fix my frame just a little bit. Um, this is Audite, right? And uh, my apologies. We're running just about uh, 28 minutes late. That's completely my fault. Um, but I, we are so excited. We have a great episode for you tonight. Uh, as you know, on Audite, we always read the Psalms for your relaxation in Latin and in English. Well, today we're not going to be reading it in Latin. We're going to be reading it in a language called Quechua. And let's see here. Mm -hmm. Come on, yes. Awesome. Sent the request for that. All right, so anyway, uh, we're going to be doing it in a language called Quechua, right? And the person who's going to do it for us, who's going to blow our minds, her name is Eunisa Suarez. She goes to school with me at Georgia State University. We've been friends for several years. She is one of the most talented and intelligent people I have ever met. She knows several languages. I won't say how many, but she definitely puts me to shame. And... Um, She's going to be doing Psalm 29 for us. So we're not going to be doing Psalm 29, which would be in Latin. It would be the Aferte Domine. But we're not going to be doing that. Um, we're going to be hearing it in the language, not of the Roman Empire, but of the Incan Empire. So, Eunice, if you want to, please introduce yourself and introduce Quechua for us. Okay. Um, I am Yam Nyoha Shuti, Eunice. My name is Eunice. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm excited here with you guys. Um, I thank Bryson for bringing me in as a guest. Um, Quechua is basically the native language of the Incans. Um, and the Andean region, they have several dialects of it. But I will be reading to you guys in uh, the Cusco, Cusqueño version, version of it, um, which is Runasimi. So that's the, the original, the hearth of Quechua. Um, but there are other that that vary, like the ones from Bolivia or the ones from Ecuador, um, and they sound really distinct. So if you have two people, the Quechuan, that speak in different dialects, they won't be able to understand. It's like completely different language. But um, yeah, I'll I'll go with the original. Um, and Psalm twenty nine. We'll we'll see how this goes. That's what I'm talking about. And thank you again for coming on. And and my apologies for my craziness with the schedule because i know i was so i'm normally so on point but we're here praise god praise god um, Yo, praise god so I, I feel like a prayer right now so yeah yeah sure let's do it let's pray before we read this psalm and uh, if you want to pray for us in quechua that is okay okay um name the father son holy spirit that's dios yeah yeah dios espíritu santo jesus okay Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here and for the opportunity to praise you in your name. Um, Señor Jesucristo, te pido que um, nos ayudes a proclamar tu palabra y que todo salga de la boca de, de nosotros sea tuyo, Señor. Así podemos glorificarte y alabarte. Um, we pray to you with Holy Mary, which is... Uchai kus haiki Maria, Dios pagracia on juntas hankanki, a punchis Dios ni, kaon mi kuna manta koyanan mi kanki, wisaiki manta pajarin mon Jesus, wai wai kiri koyanan tahni. Ah, Santa Maria, Dios pa mama nyo haiku chasapakunapa, manyo poiku pach pipas, hinata kachun Jesus. Amen. Amen. That was, never the promise of the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit in Quechua. Mm -hmm. That's I I I knew I was going to be this happy about it before we did this. So that was wonderful. Thank you. So yeah, no problem. Okay, so now I'm feeling hyped for Psalm 29. Yeah, we can do it. We've got the grace of God. We've always got our Lady of Graces looking over us here on Audite. So that makes me always feel better that if I mess up, she's here to help hey. me make it right. So um uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and, and dive in the psalm. You can give a little uh, introduction to the psalm. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want to do. And thank you, everybody who's tuning in with us. Thank you yeah. so much. 
Um, okay, I think I'll just tune in um, and then we can furthermore explain with the English version of it. Um, so yeah, okay, Psalm 29. Okay. It's a bit tricky, so I, I still haven't gotten it quite right, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Señor Dios pa yu pai chai chis, kanak pach pi kaskuna. Señor Dios pa, kapak chai chis, hatun chai chis. Señor Dios pa, kapak sutinta yu pai chai chis. Señor Dios pa, chuya wasim pi, konkor kai ki u pai chai chis. Señor Dios pa, kunkan mi la marco chapat pas kaskilin. Kapak atini yo Dios mi, kununchin. Señor Dios mi, manchana de marco chapa patapi kashan. Señor Dios pa kun kaja kai pasa papunin. Señor Dios pa kun ka hatumpunin. Señor Dios pa kun kaja cedro chachatman charkor karin. Señor Dios pa libano cedro sachakutan pakir karin. Ivano orko kutanatan torito hina pitai kachachin ermon orko tapasal kawaka unyata hina tivika kachachin Señor Dios pa kun kani yipia kispa ninata rawachin Señor Dios pa kun kani inyek pampata Katata chin, Señor Dios mi, kades chi inekta, chap chichin. Señor Dios pa, kun kami encima chaf akunata, chap chirparin. Señor Dios pa, kun kami sach akunata, kala narkarin, wasim pika yap yanmi, gloria nispa, kaparin ku. Señor Dios mi, atimuspai, para Takamchin, Señor Dios mi, winyay pach reiti yashan. Señor Dios mi, yachtanta kai pachka. Señor Dios mi, yachtanta takai wasan wa. Sani. That was, um, that was incomparably beautiful, Dionisa. Um, so 29 for you guys. I um, I remember a, a video from a while back where Pope Francis heard uh, the Lord's Prayer in uh, Aramaic. I don't know if you ever saw that video, but it was where he traveled to Eastern Europe and there were some Aramaic speakers there. And they oh said, my, yes, I recall. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, they said, Holy Father, we want to sing for you the Lord's Prayer in our language. And he said, sure, you know, let's do it. And um, um, that was kind of like that moment for me. I mean, you weren't. You weren't singing, obviously, but hearing the psalm, not in Latin, but in a language that uh, is uh, just as ancient and uh, had just as many speakers. Um, that's so beautiful. And um, Thank you. every time every time I study the, um, the history of the Americas and I see the success with which uh, the Catholic faith has converted uh, so many peoples in Latin America, just of all different various backgrounds, and they're all like coming together in this beautiful um, tapestry, like this beautiful quilt, right? Some indigenous, you've got some mixed peoples, but we're all, but we're all, they're all Catholic, and they're all coming together, and they're all singing the Psalms, and it, it's so beautiful, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for doing that. Uh, if you would, yeah. read it to us in English, because... Um, <laughs> I don't know if we can interpret the psalm just based off that. You may have to help us out a little bit. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's it can get pretty tricky. It's easier to decipher um, in Spanish if you t if you see it like it's kind of pieces together, the, but it's totally distinct. But yeah, let's let's go back to English. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. At, um, the, the one here, an online version. OK, so Psalm 29, a psalm for David. At the finishing of the tabernacle, bring to the Lord, O ye children of God, bring to the Lord the offspring of rams. Bring to the Lord glory and honor. Bring to the Lord glory to his name. Adore ye the Lord in his holy court. 
The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of majesty hath thundered. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is in power. The voice of the Lord in magnificence. The voice of the Lord breath in cedars. Yea, ye the Lord shake the cedars of Lebanus and shall reduce them to pieces as a calf of Lebanus and as the beloved son of unicorns. The voice of the Lord divideth the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the desert and the Lord shall shake the desert of Cades. The voice of the Lord prepareth the stags and he will discover the thick woods and in his temple all shall seek his glory. The Lord maketh the flood to dwell, and the Lord shall sit king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Amen. That was so beautiful. Oh Amen. My- yes, that's a wonderful psalm. That was in Latin, the Aferte Domino. I think I may have said the Aferte Domine, but it's actually Aferte Domino in Latin, but uh, I'm so glad that we did it in Quechua this episode, because we always do it in Latin, and Latin is Latin, but Quechua is Quechua, so thanks so much for that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this psalm? What What do you think uh, about it as far as interpretation is concerned? Because on our detail, we always do a little bit of interpretation at the right. end of the psalm. I've noticed that um, in the Quechua version, it's like kind of a form of praise. Mm-hmm distinct because in the english one it sounds more like an offering mm. um so it's it's really cool how you know like it's it's different um but yeah i guess if we look at it in the quechua version it's like a sacred offering meaning that the people are becoming that offering oh. children and the offspring with the rams oh i think that the quechua have it right if you want my opinion yeah. yeah. Isn't that so, crazy? That's what it's all about. Yeah, it's so weird. Different languages, just like the tonal shifts. Yeah, like this kind of alludes back to like Abraham, you know, the first prophet, like with the mm-hmm. sacrifice and his son. That's what I was like getting, like when I was reading this flashback to that. Oh, wow. And then in verse two, it points out how we adore the Lord by receiving him in the Eucharist. Right. Mm-hmm. And in this one, it's, it's just saying that Lord lives within you. So oh. In this one, Eucharist, but here it's saying like he already lives within you. Oh, wow. But it's like basically the same thing. Cause yeah, you, it's the same thing because you receive the Eucharist I, and then I, he's in you. Yeah, he's inside of you. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> isn't, yeah, isn't that crazy? Oh, my goodness. As you keep going, you see that. They praise the Lord for all his potential. How um, um, our ancestors, well, my ancestors, the Incas, they would praise nature. And mm-hmm. so they associate God as the king of all nature. So here in the English version, we see that they point out the Lord is upon waters, meaning he's a- above all nature. So I think that's really cool because that oh. also reminds me of just, I don't know, like all these back in the past, like you know, even the Greeks, they had always praised nature for its beauty. That it's confusing, and they, they they would think it's gods, right? But it's just all one being who's in control of that. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I. It was always interesting to me because um, anth- my major is in anthropology. Um, I always really liked looking at the advent of Christianity from pagan perspectives right. in, um, in uh, Europe in antiquity. And uh, people don't realize the, um, like the message, like how it sounded not, I mean, cause everybody knows cause the old Testament, how it sounded to the Jews, right? Because <laughs> the Bible's very Jewish, but when you're a pagan and you hear for a first time that there's one God, and that he's over all creation. I've studied that for years, and it it has deepened my understanding of the Christian faith so much that the Lord, I mean, yeah, he's the savior of Israel, but he's the savior of the whole world. Mm-hmm. And hearing it 
in other languages and seeing it in the various perspectives of all sorts of people groups from all over the world Is it's it always good for me and like yeah mm -hmm. yes yes um, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about that psalm? Because I honestly, I'll tell you right now, I always think that I do good on interpretation, but I couldn't have done that. So you did, you you were all over that. So sure. there's still a little bit um, more, like towards verse four and five, um, they speak more about the voice of the Lord. So in the previous ones, they talk about what the Lord can do, and in four or five about the voice itself like god speaking person um and it says voice of the lord is in power which is emphasizing the divinity of the lord the, the potential he has over us right and still he gives us that free will which is crazy you know it's um and then also in verse six seven we see that uh the Lord has potential to divide the flock. And this really reminded me of Exodus with like Moses, because you know, Moses, he was guided by the voice of the Lord mm -hmm. and he could do wonders through Moses. And so here it's in verse six, seven, eight, it's emphasizing the Lord having that power over the flames and um, preparing men. Like yes. so, yeah. Wow, yeah. Um, so mind-blowing, you know, that kind of... A... It is, and that's my thing. I always tell people, I'm like, you, I'm like, you've got to know other languages because there are just things that are said in other languages that you can't even say in English. And, like, it changes your whole worldview and... That's been the key to my Christian education, obviously, just educating myself was learning Latin because that's the perspective of perspectives right there. But I, I'd give anything to have your perspective, Unisa, and look at this from a, a Quechuan perspective. I yeah. That sounds so tempting to, to, to try to um, uh, to try to put myself in that place where I can see the world through that now. Quechua as a language, um, is it offered in any classes anywhere here in the United States for people to learn? Or It is. V okay, since it's very rare, you, you find people uh, speaking uh, Quechua, in, considering the dialects, too, um, mm -hmm. being more spoken just within the regions of Peru and the Andean zone. Um, but here in, in the United States, I've that there were podcasts located in like New Jersey, New York, you know, where there's more a Latin communication over there. And it's really cool. Um, I actually follow one that's like a Runasimi podcast. And that's where I would typically kind of practice for the year because I think okay. it helps listening to it, even if you have no idea what's mm -hmm. going on in the podcast, it really helps your ear like for pronunciation and purposes and stuff like that. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I know um, one of the outlets I did for uh, learning Latin was a, a, a service called Mango Languages. It was fantastic. And it got me to where I could read Caesar. I, I remember they offered a Cherokee um, uh, uh, course offering. And I was so tempted to take that when I finished wow. Latin, but I just never got around to it. Because a lot of my ancestors, a lot of people don't know this, but on my, on my uh, mom's side, I have a substantial Cherokee ancestry i know i look mostly white but i have so much cherokee it's ridiculous That's but cool. uh and i thought about learning the language but then i just didn't get around to it and i learned latin so but um well unisa if that's everything you've got for us um that went far better than i ever could have imagined and i certainly enjoyed it better than me just being it by myself and being in my room alone reading latin i so enjoyed your company yeah, and, all for the Lord, all for the good Lord. Mm -hmm. And we've got tons of comments on the video. So thank you, everybody who's uh, commented on uh, uh, her and her language. And I'm going to put her information in the caption to the video so that you can follow her. And please do follow her. She does amazing, amazing things. She's a, a musician. And let me tell you, she doesn't know this, but uh, when I have bad days, I listen to her music. So... <laughs> She doesn't know that, but I do that. So uh, <laughs> she's always got something new. That's how you say thank you in, in Quechua too. Also, mamaye, which is another dialect um, 
But thank you guys. I love you guys. Te quiero mucho. <laughs> yeah, All I'm right. just happy. I feel like my ancestors are really happy right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I just hope. Um, yeah, my grandmother, she's from Apurimac. She knows the Cusqueño version originally. I remember when we went to back to Peru, I was like experimenting a little bit of Quechua and she was like, you've improved. And I was like, oh goodness, okay, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, and then my grandfather, he's from um, Guaras. Mm, okay, okay. Um, you know what's funny? I had actually, when I got out of high school, uh, well, it was after I got out of basic training, I got a bonus from the military. And I had it in my mind that I was going to blow it on a trip to Peru. I swear, this is real. I'm not making this up. This is actually my goal. And I wanted to learn Spanish and go to Peru. And I wanted to see Machu Picchu. And I wanted to just be in Peru for like a month. And then I just didn't do it. Cause wow. I just, I, yeah. I wanted to go so bad, though, because I talked to – I wanted to take like a senior trip, but I wanted to go myself. And every uh, all of my Latin American friends were like uh, – well, they were all from Peru. Because the school that I went to, we had a ton of Peruvian people. And they were like, you got to go to Peru. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I do got to go to Peru. But then I just didn't go. <laughs> but God, I wish I'd have went. Maybe it would have uh, been so much good for my soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's also, Machu Picchu is also on my bucket list. I, I really want to go to Cusco. It's, it's crazy. I haven't been. Mm -hmm. yet. But someday, it's never too late to dream. And things can happen. All mm -hmm. like the Lord makes things happen, you know? Yes. That's right. And uh, I, you know, the stuff that happens, uh, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you always have to look at the providence of God and say, where, where is God in this? And uh, sometimes he's got plan for, plans for us that uh, we, we don't imagine. We set plans for ourselves and God is sort of sitting in the background saying, well, you know, you, you have your plans, but I have right. mine, you know, and it's, it's always a surprising to see what God does with you, because I can tell you right now, when I was making my plans going to Peru, I didn't imagine I'd be on a show on IGTV with uh, with a woman doing uh, Psalms and Quechua. So that just goes to show you all the surprises that God has. Yep, for yep. sure. So um, uh, other than that, I can't think of anything in my feeble little brain that we need to do before uh, we we leave. But uh, one of the things I always like to do on our detail is always like to say good night in Latin and it's uh, Bunam Nakhtem. But how would you say good night in Quechua? Okay, this is a bit tricky. So it's Pajarin. Say Pajarin. that again. Pajarin. Oh, no, I'm not even going to attempt it. I thought, well, maybe I'll attempt it. It'll be fun for the viewers. Pa. Ba. Ka. Ka. Din. Din. Kama. Kama. Bajarin Kama. Bajarin Kama. Yay, you got it. You it got I got it, it kind of? That's good night. Okay, awesome. Bajarin Kama. Okay. It's easier than I thought. Yeah. Uh, the, the only uh, American Indian language that I've had a super ton of exposure to, and this is so weird, but it's uh, Nahuatl. And uh, I don't well, know if you've ever heard anybody speaking Nahuatl. Uh, but uh, I went through a period of time when I was a history major where I was really like heavily studying uh, um, uh, the uh, Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. And uh, I wish, why has nobody made that into a movie yet? It would be the most best movie ever. But uh, I listened to a ton of Nahuatl and uh, looked at some of the New Testament in Nahuatl. And um, it was just so beautiful. But uh, as some of our viewers might be interested to know, um, we're talking about American Indian languages as if they're one group, but they're not. They're mm -hmm. as different from each other as English is from Chinese. So it's just, it's a whole bunch of different worlds and language families, and there's a lot to learn. So what was that, Yunisa? I'm sorry. I said for sure, yeah. It's like mm -hmm. gift of tongues, man. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, but if you have I the gift it. of tongues, you don't have to learn all these languages. The Holy Ghost will just give it to you, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. so but uh Yunisa, i can't thank you enough for coming on aldite um i can't thank you enough for reading to us in quechua it's something that i never could have done and um uh i just well, i want to thank you for being my friend so yeah. oh, uh, well. yep. man. but do you okay. want to pray Oh, yeah. Let's pray some more. You can never pray too much, ever. Yeah. Sure. You can, you can end it with the prayer, though. <laughs> Let's do okay. it. Okay. All right. Uh, 
All right. Uh, I'll do I'll do the beginning and the end in Latin, but uh, the middle part I'll do in English. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come here and read your blessed word um, in all of the languages of the children of men. Um, because no matter what language, no matter where we come from, what time we're in, Lord, your message of love to us is the same. It's that you came in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. And I thank you, God, so much that you made known to us um, this revelation, uh, the gospel God, and I thank you so much for how you've blessed Adite, how you've blessed me. God, I thank you so much for Eunisa, and God, I ask you to bless her in everything that she does, and that both of us and everybody listening, um, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, but that uh, all of us, our hearts, God, would be converted to you, God, and uh, everything that we do would be for your glory till the end of the world, so that one day, Lord, we might see you face to face in heaven, God. And um, again, I thank you so much, Lord, and we love you. And I pray this per Jesum Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Amen. So, awesome. Awesome. Well, Eunice, thank you again so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Um, when in the future, after we've done some more Psalms, and uh, I actually am much, much better prepared, I would love to have you back. Yeah. On the show and hear some more Quechua or maybe whatever sure. other language you want to do because um, uh, everybody loves you and I do too. So thanks. Yeah, we can we can do Spanish next time. Yeah, we can do Spanish next time. And uh, my Spanish pronunciation is so funny because I've got a lot of Latin American viewers and they're like, Bryson, you know, try to pronounce Spanish and I do it. And then they just send back a, a phone recording of just, of just them laughing at me. So very, very humbling. Yeah, I can't do, I just can't do it. And you would think it would be so similar to Latin, but in some ways it's not. It's different, yeah. but. Hey, I um, lose you Latin, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So uh, anyway, Eunice, God bless you. And I want to say God bless all our viewers. I hope all of you have a wonderful night. Or as the Romans would say. Dios los bendiga. Yeah. Uh, the Romans would say Bonam Noctem and the uh, Incans and the Quechua. And, uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eunice. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, God bless all of you, and I will see you again next time on Aldite. Bye bye. <laughs>